Welcome back to another interesting episode of Family Matters on Foursquare TV. My name is Akin Lulukeindi. Today we are continuing on the discussion I do Christian family. Last week we established that a couple is supposed to live, cleave and become one flesh. We also established that the mother is majorly responsible for the building of an ideal Christian family. Today we still have Reverend Timitayo and Reverend Mrs. Biodun Shosoya who will continue the discussion. But before we begin, we'll go on a quick break. Don't go anywhere. My name is Olusan Vola and I want to encourage you to watch Foursquare TV. Foursquare TV, live in full. Welcome back to Family Matters on Foursquare TV. The program that aims at discussing and sharing issues pertaining to the family. As I said earlier, we still have Reverend and Reverend Mrs. Shusonya with us in the studio. Welcome, ma. Welcome, sir. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, continuing from where we stopped our discussion, I would like to ask, when one parent is not available in the family, probably traveling or probably a single parent, who is responsible for the building of a family? Uh, well, since you said one is not available, mm. if one is not available, the one that is available is responsible. Mm. You know, and some people find it difficult to do, especially men, if it remains only the man. Mm. Probably as a result of divorce, traveling, or any other thing. Or maybe the wife has an assignment in her workplace and and she has to travel. Like if we are going to, if we have been doing the right thing from the beginning, there shouldn't be any problem. Like in our home now, my wife and myself we do things together. Right from the beginning, we do take of our children together. When we wake up in the morning, if we are to go to church, if my wife is cooking and bathing the children, that's what I don't do. I know how to back babies, I know how to prepare food, feed her, everything. I know how to make nappy. Wow. So if for one reason or the other my wife is not available, I continue doing the, doing the work. Mm. But in a situation where the man has not been doing it, you know, it might be easier for the woman because we are taking it as her responsibilities. So if the man is not around, it might be easier for the woman. Mm. But most of the time, if the woman is not around, it becomes difficult. Mm. But for us, for me, it can never be difficult <laughs> because I've been doing it. So if all men learn to do that, mm. then anyone that is not available, the other one, the other one is supposed to take over mm. when the other person is not available. In a case where um, the parent is probably not in the same state as one parent is not where the family is, are there measures that can be taken to ensure that he's still responsible or she is still responsible for the growth of the family? Yes. Um, there are many things that they can do. Uh, communication is very important. They communicate. The one where you have the children, maybe the father or the mother, so how to communicate with the other person at the other end. What is happening in the family? So that one also may have, though may not be present physically, mm. but we have one idea or one thing or the other, and we feel everything that is happening in the family. Mm. So if the woman is not the one around now, the children can call. So father will call and give the phone to the children. They will talk to the mother or to the father, as the case may be. So. They may not even feel, apart from the physical presence, mm. the, especially with this uh, uh, GSM, WhatsApp, Internet, something. So you can always communicate if there have been love in the family. So apart from the physical absence, all other things will still be in place because you communicate to the other person at the other end. And what is going on in the family? How do you want me to do it? And there are times even when I travel, my wife is at home, but we have a, a situation where we can call mm. this, uh, this system or some network service CUG. provider now, like CUG. If we want to do money devotion, yeah. if I go somewhere to minister, I mean, I know tell, and my wife is at home, you know, with other people, 
I will just call myself, you know, by this CUG system. And we talk. We can be on phone, praying, doing things together for almost one hour, two hours. Wow. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Uh, mommy, I would like to ask, in a case where the parents have tried to instill Christian values in the children, but then they grow up and then they leave this part, the part of Christianity, and decide to do what they want to do. What should the couple, what should the parent do in these cases? <coughs> Maybe I will first of all say something. Before they go out of the way, Right from the onset, because uh, before they go out of the way, so many things will have happened. We should have been copped. Not until, like, uh, you know, bad people will say that, uh, you know, if a fish, a, if a fish has smoked it and it's now stiff, mm. you can't break it. If you try to break it, it's just, it's false. Mm. So, but before it gets to that, Let's look at it that with the children, right from the onset, you normally make sure you penetrate them through the devotion, being their friends, listening to them. You know, so many parents, they don't have time for their children. And when they are calling the attention of either the father or the mother, go and meet your mother. Leave me, go and meet your father. And at the end of the day, there are nowhere to be found. I want to go to the father, we say go to mommy. Mommy, we say go to daddy. They go to their friends. Mm. And their friends, they don't have what is good for them. There's this peer pressure that they can easily fall into the trap. You know, we have um, secondary school, even maybe primary or in courts. Yes, yes. They have been initiated into this court group. And once they are there, they will have threatened them. And the fear will be there. They will not want to go away from what they have been told to, to do, do or not to do. So if you now start seeing a primary school boy or secondary school boy carrying a gun mm. to kill, it's the fault of the parents because they were not there. So while they are growing up, father and mother should always be there mm. for the children. So many things we need to teach them. Like uh, for the girls, when they are growing, they, start, they get to a stage where they start menstruating. Yes. And if nobody is there, it's another story. Mm. She will not be, because the parents couldn't give their attention, she will just go to the friend. See, I'm seeing blood. What is the problem with me? Like the story of a girl, she started having a period with pains and went to the teacher. Parents were not there. And the teacher said, well, if you start having sex with some guys, the pain will go. Ah. And within six months, she got pregnant. Ah. The parents were so destabilized, but they were not there. And already that has destroyed, though she can still go back to school, but it has destroyed her life. And another one, we went somewhere outside Nigeria to a minister. <clears throat> and that person was saying, the mother was too harsh. I mean, too harsh. That she couldn't go to the mother, this and that. So she confided in the, one of the neighbors. And she, she says, boys are coming. Asking her to be friend, to be this, that. And that one was trying to give the wrong advice. Then she came up to me for cancer. I said, Mommy, this is what is happening. And I don't want to go into it. If I should tell my mom, she will beat me mercilessly. Why? Wow. That's not how to train the children. If your child can easily come up to you, you should be happy. Because... Some they cannot. That's why by the time they go to friends, they have already destroyed their lives. And even we have to monitor them, not having many friends. You have to know the kind of friend your daughter or your son is moving with. And by the time they are getting to 
maturing, they are getting matured. Try to tell the boy, see you, a time will come, your voice will break. Mm. I start talking by your tone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, by the time you start noticing, hey, this uh, voice has changed. Quickly call the attention of the boy. This and this will start happening to you. Everything that will come up in that system. And the boy will get to understand. Like our two daughters, to the glory of God, we have a. Uh, you can't call boys and girls again. <laughs> we have uh, two women and two men. Wow. With their own children, except the last one. So the, we have trained the first girl, or the woman now, <laughs> how to take care of herself mm. anytime she is seen her menstruation. So by the time the second was, was to start the, her own, they went to do, have their holiday somewhere, and she started. The senior one took over and guided the Younger junior one. sister how to go about the whole thing. Mm. If not, it will have been another story. Mm. Supposing there is no lady there, it's a man you have to go to and say, see what is happening. They will give the wrong advice. advice. Only those who have the fear of God that will guide the children are right. So with these children, not to go out because we don't pray for it. It's a sad, sad story. If it happens to any of our children, you know, how any man of God will fear. You start seeing your, ch your son amongst the drug addicts, seeing him among those that will, change, that, that will do something out of the way. It's an embarrassment. Mm. And uh, one will not be able to concentrate in the work of the Lord. So we need to pray for adventure. It has got into a state that uh, the son or the daughter has gone the wrong way. It's better we call. The love that you have not been showing to that child, mm. show more love. Mm. Be, be there, always be there for your children. Don't be too busy that you cannot go with them for PTA. Parents, teacher sensation. Okay. Don't be too busy that you cannot be there for their sports, inter sports. Go there, help share them, them, share them up. They feel good. Oh, my mom is there, my dad is there. They want to feel high and do more. Let me add this. First and foremost, if a child had gone out of the way, the first thing is to go to God in prayer mm -hmm. okay. as Christians. That's the first thing. Then the second thing is to look at the area you as a parent have I made failed. mistakes wow. where you have failed. Mm -hmm. Because a child will not just go out of the way. Mm -hmm. You know, today you discover that many children or ministers have one issue or the other, waywardness and other things. It's because most of the time, ministers do not have time mm. for their children who are so concerned about the ministry, the about church. other things. So a, there, there is something that when you look at it critically, you have failed in one way or the other. Parents fighting in the presence of the children. Mm. So other things like that. So children, a child like that. But if you have done your own part well, with prayer, you won't have that problem. But if you have that problem of a child going out of the way, then praying after prayer, look at the way you have failed. If it's necessary to even call the child and apologize, say, I know I'm the one that have not done well. So, but by the grace of God, I will change. I've realized that it's me or it's the two of us that did not actually put you through. Mm -hmm. So I think those two things, with prayer, realizing what you have done, done, and even confessing to the child, so may be able to bring the child back. Thank you very much for your answers. We'll go on a quick break. This is the Family Matters on Foursquare TV. My name is Alicia Davis, and please keep watching Foursquare TV. Foursquare TV, live in full. Welcome back to Family Matters on Foursquare TV. 
we've been talking about ideal Christian family. We have talked a whole lot on things to do and things not to do. But moving on in the discussion, I would like to ask, what is the role of a pastor in building of an ideal Christian family? Daddy, you can help us with that. Yes, the role of a pastor until the pastor realizes, a pastor realizes this, that a pastor is first a, um, a husband, mm. then father before ministry. Mm. Until a pastor realizes that, you know, many people don't understand ministry and God is not the same, same thing. thing. Because many people, when you say that, that uh, ministry, I mean, that a pastor should be, is first a father, I mean, is first a husband, then father, before a minister or man of God. Many people think you are putting God last. No. Ministry and God, they are two different things. In one's life, God is number one. Then yourself. Then your wife. And your, ch I mean, your children before you come to ministry. Mm -hmm. So if a pastor realizes that, he will know because many pastors have neglected their duties. So in running ministry and doing other things, neglecting the family. And that's why today, uh, you might not know, but I'm telling you today that we have many pastors. Many pastors have problems in their families more than even the members of the church. It's what many people are just patching up things. So if a pastor realizes that, he knows that he has to join. The, the wife is not the only one to take care of the children. He has to join the wife in taking care of the children, though the wife has the major responsibilities. Another thing that the pastor can do is also to love the wife. Because if daddy and mommy love themselves, training of the children becomes very easy. Now, if you look into the Bible, I'll give you an example. Look at the example of Eli and Samuel. What is the name of Eli's wife? Prophet Samuel, I mean, uh, Prophet uh, Eli and, and Samuel. Samuel. Their wives are not known. To me, when you look at the, fa at the family, they don't really have, uh, with that, you would see that they really love, they concentrated on the ministry and neglected the family. And when a man of God does not really love the wife and carry her along, then the tendency is there for the wife to also neglect the children. But if you love your wife, you take care of your wife, your wife, because the man of God cannot really take care after to take care of the children. It's the responsibility of the woman. But the woman who will take care of the children, mm. love her. Mm. Let her be happy. Make her happy. And you discover with the story of Eli and Samuel, the wives were not available. Maybe the wives were neglected. They were not happy. And that's why the wives could not come up with the training of the children. And eventually, the children of Eli and Samuel in the Bible were wayward. And it's, it's these same children who destroyed their ministry, affected their ministry negatively. So, in, the case, in the case of where it's just an ordinary family, where the father is not a minister, what is the role of a pastor, for instance, going to church to say, okay, I have an issue in my family. What is the role of that pastor in that family? You mean to say to... Yes probably to settle disputes or to counsel when there are issues. Should that be something families should consider? Yes. Uh, there is a difference between a uh, third party and counseling. Mm. Most of the time, pastors are there to counsel the family when they have issues. A counselor, pastor acts like a counselor, not like a third party. Many people don't want to involve anybody. In the, when they have issues. Though if you run your family well, there is no need for any pastor to interfere. By the grace of God, 
our marriage by in few months now will be 37 years. Wow. 37 years. And we've never had anybody, either pastor, mm -hmm. even before we became pastors, whether pastor or family members, we've never had anybody coming in to settle quarrel for us. Not that we don't have problems, not that we don't have challenges, not that we don't, we don't disagree. We don't even quarrel the presence of our children. Mm. It starts from our room and it ends there. Mm. Without even children, not, I mean, not men about it. But in the case where there is a problem between us and one, and they cannot settle, mm. there is nothing wrong in going to a counselor or a pastor who can. And the role of that pastor is not to take side. Mm. It's the role of a, of a, a counselor, not the role of a third. Many pastors play the role of a third party. The role of the third party is you try to be one-sided, especially when you inform your parents. That's why issues should not be taken to parents. Mm. If it's taken to parents, your parents will, will be one-sided. Mm. They will side their own children, they will side of their children. So third party will come and say, you are a portion blame. That's third party. That's why we advise people, don't bring in third party into the family. But the role of a pastor is the role of a counselor. Look at what is happening and give them solution. Mm. And that's the role of a pastor when there's an issue in the family. Mommy, what do you have to say with regards to the question? Well, with uh, the family having issues and the pastor coming, when he was talking, something came to my mind that, you know, some pastors to the field in so many areas when it comes to uh, settling disputes for couples. If the pa wife or the husband has been somebody buying things for pastors, sorry uh. to say, or giving money, that may be a kind of weakness. Yes. And it's not supposed to be. Mm. At that point, forget about what the person has done, giving you money or whatever, buying this and that for you, so that you don't offend God. You are not doing it to them, but to God. And God will not be happy. But at the end of the day, this man is to call them. Probably, you know, some men, especially husbands, they will not want to go to church. Mm. You don't have time for weekly programs. But if it were to be maybe so, so, uh, team has to play football. <laughs> Chelsea, Manchester, this and that. Mm -hmm. They will have the time. <laughs> Is it touching you? <laughs> they will have the time. They will sit back at home. Mm. Uh, some pastors will even bring out the television into the church. Wow. So that they can watch the match. Mm. So, but at this point, you have to encourage the man, especially handing him over to the main president, so that they can follow him up with some other people of his own caliber. And once he starts coming, before you know it, himself too will know about uh, morning devotion. We bring in other things into the church, following church programs, and then everything starts changing. We follow up some people, I think, through the uh, women wing. The woman uh, goes to bed, and we told you to, to, to every day. Go and do this, and that turned the heart of the man mm. from the church he was attending and turned back to first square. Mm. Actually, before we left that uh, parish, uh, local church, so to say, he was already the vice president. Wow, wow. So that would have been able to iron out the differences between the two of them, you know. If you say there is a program in the church, when will you see women? <laughs> Like happened, people that are there, women, men, when you come back, you tell me what happened. And by the time he has been advised, by the time he attends a program with the men, maybe businessmen program, whatever, and with prayers, mm. and the pastor being concerned about his life, he will definitely change okay. and be able to take over the role 
of a good father, and that will make the family to be a wonderful one. All right, uh, moving on to the very last question for today. There are a lot of dysfunctional families in the society and even in the church. As pastors and as leaders in the church, what do you think the church can do to address or help these families? Uh, most of the problems in the homes, from my experience, is majorly because of ignorance. Mm. Ignorance of the word of God, ignorance of what makes things to work in the family. You know what? A prayer is good, mm. but prayer does not make marriage work. Mm. Anointing is good. <laughs> Anointing does not make marriage work. Mm. It takes principles. Take principles. We have one of our books, 12 Habits of a Highly Successful Marriage. That is talking about the principles that make marriages work. Mm. So anybody that follows the principle of success of marriage, his marriage will work. Anybody at all, mm. the marriage will work. If a Christian, a pastor, does not follow the principle of success, speak in tongues, pray, you have anointing, it will work. work. Wow. So since we know it's ignorance, you need to know. So because of that, what you need to do is that the church must be able to organize what I call training or seminars mm. regularly to make sure that family, I mean, families understand what marriage really is. So we are, by the grace of God, we have many people that they have div uh, they've divorced for or separated more than 15 years. Mm. Now, this, this couple married for 28 years. Mm -hmm. Divorce, I mean, separated for 15 years. Wow. We met them through the children. Met them through the children in one of uh, the camping areas. So, and <laughs> we were able to, the father was not there, but the father came to carry the children, uh. and the mother was there. So the children ran to us. And so we were able to meet them. But she said, no, they were living in two different towns. Wow. Don't want, want to mention. And so I said, no, they cannot come together again. No, they've been separated for 15 years. Married for 28 years. But when we find the way of bringing them together, share with them why the marriage need to work, it can still work, things like that. You know, that was around December 25, 26. Do you know, two weeks later, sometimes in the following year, January, mm. about two, three weeks later, the children brought an invitation card. Wow. Which of, it, which, which of his is going to wear? Say, no, this is the invitation card of the wedding of our father and, and our, our mother. mother. Wow. We attended the wedding. You know. The father was wearing <laughs> suit. Mama was wearing cream color wedding gown. And they did that wedding again after 15, 15 years. years of separation. So wow. when they were made to understand that the marriage can... So if the church can play that role, because today in churches we organize program, uh, deliverance, prosperity, everything. But if family has problem, every other aspect of our lives we have problem. Thank you very much, mommy and daddy, for your time on this show. We're really grateful. That's all we can take on today's episode of Family Matters. Till I come your way next time, remember to stay united as a family. My name is Kendi Akinlulu. Mm -hmm.